And away we go. Sorry about the delay, folks. Technical difficulties. This is Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew D&D 5th Ed campaign uh, in which uh, I have created a bizarre world, which I am in the process of destroying in the past as well as the future. Thankfully, I have some players who either will prevent me to do that or will just cheer as the whole thing burns. I'm Mark Dean Caffney, the one, the GM and uh, host, and with me I do have my players, starting on my left with Pat. My name is Pat. I am playing Silas Marsh, uh, cultist. My name is uh, Marie, and I'm playing Annie, who is a mainly rogue. I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medric, half orc cleric. Mainly rogue. <laughs> Not sure what the other parts are, but we'll discover that as we play. I just mean, mystery. part fighter, also just you know, princess. doing her thing. Part princess. princess. Yeah. How many levels in princess do you have? We should probably work that out. <laughs> Um, these are the adventurers, um, Silas, the representative of the cult of the mother, seeking a way that ultimately he can bring his goddess uh, into the orbit of the world, if you will. Uh, Annie, who is a princess, although she tells nobody that except for a few people uh, who are closest to her and who has fled from her kingdom to find out what the world is really like. And I'm not sure what conclusions she's drawing so far, but I suspect that um, it may not be what she thought it was. And finally, Medric, cleric of Ignis, the sun god, um, also sometimes on fire willingly as a soldier in the front lines. Currently, the group. I forgot to mention, Medric has a little friend now. <laughs> uh, that's it's true. To get rid of him, but it's really awkward. <laughs> uh, it's true. A, a little. Uh, I think it was an elder spark, right? That uh, that yeah. uh, decided you were going to be a friend. Uh, because the group is following a thread, uh, they are they are looking for uh, relics, items, power from a long lost. I guess you could call them scholarly cult, or maybe a scholarly uh, uh, adventurers called Argenti Sagex, who once apparently traveled through the plains with ease, and now are long lost. In fact, most of what is found of them is in ruins. It was one of these ruins you entered into just a little while ago and discovered, uh, and you were there on behalf of Tassar, uh, someone who seems to be one of the, well, there's lots of terms you could use, maybe heralds of the end of a particular god in the universe, or cleanup duty, or who knows, observer maybe, who is looking to uh, remove elements related to the god which is being removed from the world that led you here, uh, or led you there rather, to this bunker, a long lost bunker of Argenti Sagex, in which you found the uh, our your favorite and mind and mine, the uh, uh, beholder with a bow tie, Tauzek Riva, who himself is a follower of Oculon. Uh, did I say it right this time? I don't know why I keep messing that name up. Uh, but a, a singular being, an eyeball, perhaps formerly of a god, perhaps of its own being, a watcher of the universe. He too is searching for ways to bring Oculon closer to the mortal realm. Well, after a tussle with some not so nice neighbors to whatever this realm was, um, you were given another lead follow through another dimensional portal, another another planar uh, a gap to where another bunker of the Argenti Segex is, there to find some sort of relic, something of power, something of uh, control. You're not quite sure exactly what, but Tau Zachriva is convinced that you'll find something of use to help him protect himself as well as advance the causes of all of you. After a, um, a less than uh, a pleasant pathway through the realm, apparently, of, of uh, earth and stone, you found yourself in this strange room, a four-segmented space in which the elements of earth, fire, water, and void, apparently, are represented. 
It is at times, sometimes a puzzle, sometimes a gateway, and sometimes just frustrating as you're not quite sure exactly what to make of it all. However, you have so far figured out that the walls on this space move at the behest of a, um, a uh, handle which is found in each room and they move in split formation, revealing that the upper and the lower parts of the wall have different things on them, different writing, different symbols, and so forth. Onto that as well, you found a, um, a shelving unit, if you will, a, a, a mounting spot in which you seem to find uh, a perfect placing for some large gems or large crystal that seem to be somewhat representative. But the exact order of what the room should be and where you should be looking for the inner door is a little bit confusing. Adding on to that, there are hazards in each of these rooms and a mysterious voice that seems to be coming from nowhere and everywhere, which is curious about your activities. Very curious about your purposes and being here. Along with you is the uh, scholar uh, Dudek, who has been uh, himself among probably many different academic pursuits, has fashioned himself as part of the Argenti Sagex by virtue of having found some uh, artifacts of theirs a long time ago, uh, a ring in particular of identification to them, the clever eye ring, as well as the strange orrery, which you found to be somewhat powered by the uh, compass you had uncovered also potentially in some distress, but which seemed to show the celestial positions of various planes. And finally, a representative of Tauzek Riva himself, a, uh, a Nothic, a one-eyed, ghastly creature, who is nonetheless somehow able to interpret the words of Argenti Sagex, and maybe a little bit more, haven't really asked Ish uh, all that, sorry, Gosh, all that much, uh, but they are there as well to watch, presumably, help, presumably, and who knows what else. Currently, having investigated a room full of void, a room of earth, which you came into, a room of water, in which a curious water spirit seemed to take some interest to you, and now the, a room of fire, in which a larger flaming, uh, I believe flaming tornado is how I described it before, uh, which seemed to have taken some interest in Medric, possibly due to the godly connections, possibly because it was bored. Uh, it is here. Um, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Probably. His name is Crispy now, too. Its <laughs> name is Crispy? Okay. I don't know if I had that written down. I'll try it's to make my a note notes. of that. I forgot to. <laughs> I it is in mine as well. <laughs> I have only a few notes from the last session here, I think. Let's see if Crispy... Crispy, the Elder Spark, is written down, so... Indeed, it is true. You also notice various symbols and uh, representations, but maybe you haven't quite put it all together yet. So, uh, we'll switch over to the map for all of those following along at home. What would you guys care to try next? This room, by the way, is full of fire. Fire which has intensified since placing the golden... Um, uh, fire-colored gem in the third position. Right, and I went down to pick up the blue gem, which was a water gem, so that one probably has to go back in the water, right? Yep. I'll ask my colleagues. Yes, that was the plan. Um, until you brought Crispy along. Okay, well, so I'll explain to Crispy what's going to happen. So, the walls are going to move, you have to go under and then over, or like, I'll explain what, what he has to do. And the next room is going to be full of water, so it's going to be really dangerous. Are you sure you don't want to stay here? <laughs> um, at the mention of water, there is what you would imagine some sort of... Uh, it's a combination of, of fear and anger, uh, a natural antagonism possibly between the elements. And you're not sure whether it's going to stay here or not. Don't forget that there was also a water elemental in there. Yeah, that too. They may not get along. There might be a slap fight that mm -hmm. won't end well for the fire. It'll be very steamy. <laughs> It'll be a sauna. 
But uh, yeah. If you still want to follow us, Crispy, you have to be really careful and don't start anything, please. We're just trying to escape this place with our lives, and if you want to come along, then you got to be alive. But it is not warm there. No, I know. It's unpleasant. I, I was in the water before. It, it, yeah, it, it was unpleasant. But I'm not made of fire. You are. So be safe. I will stay here. All right. And just for See fun, I'll go ahead and actually put a little red dot where Crispy is at. And I'll put it on the right layer so you can actually see it. There we go. All kinds of miscellaneous things. There is a platform which is only a few feet above the ground. It seems to be hovering on its own. Um, it is above the column of flame but not consumed by it. And it seems to be the place where someone would step up to reach the um, the uh, uh, lever in this room. Uh, you're Sorry, muted. muted. Yeah. Uh, Crispy, by, by the way, do you think you could pull that lever for us? Uh, let's I see. can pull the lever for us. It's easy it, enough. It will try. Immediately goes over and kind of surrounds it. And you lose sight of the lever for the time where Crispy has wound itself around them. And then there's a noticeable and loud kathunk as... Uh, me outside uh, as uh, the lever seems to have been triggered. Silas is on the ground. <laughs> Nedrick is on the ground. <laughs> okay. Annie is also in the on the ground to go Get down. <laughs> uh, as the room begins to spin. Uh, now you know this is coming, so it's no longer kind of a dexterity saving throw. There is a bit of uh, acrobatics or athletics needed just to make sure you're not swept up by the uh, by the walls as they move along. Which way are you going, by the way? You're all uh, gathered up onto the water side? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going back to the left side room. Yeah, because we need to put the gem in the water. Okay. Let me just see if I remember how to move... In, in, in Medrick's mind, it's like he was thinking, wait, wasn't that room filling up? Is it going to be full when we get there? But wait, we have water breathing, never mind. Yep. I think this is the right layer for this. Whoops, that's the wrong button. Uh, oh, that goes that way. All right, as I uh, will have uh, acrobatics or athletics rolls from each of you. I see athletics. that 16, mm. not a problem. 14. 14 is not a problem. <laughs> 12 is not a problem. It's a lot easier now. Uh, let's see. Uh, five is a problem. That's two deck. Uh oh. Uh oh. deck. Uh, and from. Um. Uh, sixteen from. Um, which you probably didn't see because it seems to have reset my preferences. Anyway, um, Gosh has no problem popping over, but. Uh, it looks as though Dudek is caught by the lower wall. Uh, and you find yourselves separated. So. I'll everyone, try to yell, we'll get to you. Everyone else, we already figured shift. out that you can't hear. <laughs> everyone else gets shifted to the other side. And no sign of Dudek. And here you are. I'm not sure if this combination of words you've seen before or not. No. 
we haven't seen these upper ones before. Okay. Um, unfortunately, well, Dudek was one of the people helping to translate, but Gosh will translate through um, your minds, kind of looking at each of you. That un that unwavering and somewhat unnerving gaze that he uses whenever he's contemplating anyone. Um, and we'll choose, I think, Silas to communicate with. And we'll translate that the upper, that the phrases on the left-hand side are in acknowledging fear, the doorway is open. And on the other side, from the universe, the knowledge blooms. The, water, the room is not full of water. It seems to be uh, now maintaining uh, only about to the level of the floor. Okay, well. Yeah. Um, Silas will uh, swim out towards the middle so uh if uh, if medrick wants to give up the stone silas yep. will start placing it because yeah, medrick would prefer not to go in the water now that he's dry again from the fire room okay and on what position are you putting the stone uh starting at the top and then we'll just keep moving it down until something happens Okay. Um, you place it into the first position. How long do you wait before you think something has happened? Well, 30 seconds. I mean, the other ones seem to be fairly quick when something happened, so. Okay. You place it in there. The only thing you seem to be able to hear is just the sound of water itself rushing in, but the water is not rising any higher. You also don't notice the presence of that that uh, water element you saw, saw elemental you saw before. If it is within the water, maybe it is invisible as such, or maybe it's just not here. Maybe it went somewhere else. Putting it down mm. to the second position, however, it does seem to settle in a little more strongly. And there is a much louder sound, the sound of a rushing waterfall. As the room itself begins to fill with water, I would need someone to play to roll a d20 for me, please. Okay. And now I need a d4. All right. You hear the sound of the water rushing in, and then the sound grows extraordinarily uh, strong. But there's another sound, one that you've kind of heard before. Back in the town of Aelthvater, just as the incursion of portals was happening, there was a sort of low ripping sound, something similar to that, but more controlled seems to occur. Uh, and in that instant, uh, you uh, make out from below you, the water seem to flash uh, in in rapid succession. I might even have... Silas, is that supposed to happen? I don't know what's supposed to happen. From below you... Ah, oh, I do. Perfect. Um, you see, looks like, oh, uh, Marie, your camera is going crazy right now. Yeah, I see that too. Now, it's like all flashing. <laughs> uh, you see uh, dark shapes move into the water. Do you have dark vision, Silas? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll be back. <laughs> we'll have a brief disconnect and reconnect but as you make out several humanoid shapes appear um, three in particular they seem bulkier than a humanoid frame um, with what would be much larger hands and 
other vague appendages around the head. After a moment or two, you do come to recognize them. And I'll just drop them right into the map if I can get that to work properly. As you remind yourself back to the invasion that happened of Aelthvater, mm. and large crab-like humanoids seem to whoosh into the lower part of the room. About 40 feet below you is where you saw that happening. Uh, and then you see them disoriented at first, but then kind of as you're in the water, you can kind of hear uh, the popping and buzzing and burbling sounds uh, as they seem to recognize each other and come to some sort of agreement. Do you still have um, uh, uh, comprehend languages? You had something like that going. No. Okay. And you're not no, aware of while ago. what the terms are. Um, the rest of you can make out kind of vaguely that something has happened, um, but only Silas has in this moment uh, any indication of what exactly has happened. The water continues to rise. What would you like to do in this instant? I'm just well, looking at Silas, and it's like, uh, what do we do? <laughs> so I did that. To have done. So, oh, I minimized. There we go. I accidentally minimized the video somehow. Um, I'll tell them we've got uh, crab people again, um, like the ones from the dock. Oh shit! Damn it! But I'll say that that gives you a warning round to do something. You're not surprised because of this. They were disoriented so, uh, for a moment the... or two. So uh, back to the fire room. No, if we go into into another, we we need do deck. Shit, it's not necessarily going to help though. Um. Well, we've okay. Uh... Silas, you do notice that they have now looked upward and appear to be rising to the surface as the water itself starts to rise. It's now about a foot above the floor, rising quickly. Uh, just checking something. Okay. The only room that we don't have the stone in the right spot was the bottom one. We weren't sure at all if it was in the right one. Oh, the void we could go there and try to move that around until something clicks, but he looks over at Annie and says, "Got to decide quick." I'm okay with Grab not staying incoming. here. Yeah, we we but we need to get Dudek out of the other room. They have now so... risen to the surface and are looking at you with hungry multiple eyes. Let's roll if you initiative. Want to go back for, uh, if you want to go back for Dudek. We could do that. Yeah, that would be my. My go. So they are now proceeding to advance on you. All right. And for simplicity's sake, I will simply roll once for them. Which is not great. <laughs> Did somebody roll for Gosh, or was he there already? I may have left him up from previously, I don't remember. He might have still been there. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't see, I don't see an initiative hmm. roll for him in the window. Okay, I think my rolls are also hidden at the moment, so I will try to... Uh, Uh, that puts uh, wait a minute okay I'm going to redo that because I also have Tauzek Riva in here <laughs> I don't know how well, we can use his help. <laughs> I don't know how that happened so uh, I may not have cleared them off before so we'll clear them off now I apologize 
uh, please make I didn't your... see him on it on, on ours. But... I, I don't know why the GM's view is different, but I'd rather start from a position which is actually known for some for this reason. Um, all right, sorry, I had to find him again. Uh, and I despise having only one screen. Okay. And I will add your turns back in. Actually, if you can re-roll your... Let me see here. Uh, I'm not going to do it from here. Haven't, haven't done this for a little while. There we go. Uh, we'll add your turns back in. Uh, okay. Apologies, folks. For some reason, I'm forgetting how to do everything. But that's okay. Uh, Medric 9.1 and ah, sorry, Silas at 8.12 and he had that 13 point 13.16 16, okay, mm -hmm. so there we uh, go I'm flashing it again, I might end up just uh -oh. turning off my camera and Figuring that out later. All right. There we go. Sorry about that confusion. However, they are going to advance uh, as they make out that there are not them. You're not sure if they have any more intelligence than that. They're simply swimming over uh, to the not them. Um, kind of spreading themselves out. Medric, at the moment, you're un, uh, unaffected. But one of them will take a swing at a uh, pincer attack at Gosh. Uh, and misses on the first strike. Hits on the second strike. It looks like a pretty severe hit. Um, Gosh has been injured a number of times and is struggling so much, somewhat, as the uh, pincer wraps around it, and sorry, I'll get my, my lines in order here, uh, oh, and it is grappled onto Gosh. Gosh is currently bound. Uh, well, meaning it will now chomp down on Gosh's head yeah. uh, to see if Gosh will actually taste as good as he might seem. Uh, Gosh, however, bristles and squirms and seems to um, resist the tentacles making any firm purchase. You see Gosh blinking furiously as the tentacles kind of crawl across its head and seem to be trying to pick them, pick into underneath its eyelids. It does not like this and makes a, makes a sort of animalistic uh, uh, squealing noise, very uh, different from anything else. It's, it's kind of, uh, at this point, very strangely um, feral. Um, the one on uh, one of the ones on uh, the one on Annie is similarly going to be trying to grasp at you with these large pincers. If you recall, these are essentially crab-like creatures. They have uh, four spindly legs. They have two massive tentacles or massive arms, massive claws. Uh, and a mouthful of tentacles, which you've seen them uh, latch onto the head of their victims and start to uh, uh, drain their uh, their life force, their life energy. Uh, so I would recommend not being hit by them. Uh, first Definitely one makes, <laughs> makes a swing. Oof. 
That is a 25 to hit. Gross. Um, as it, uh, with one of its massive claws, clamps down on you, and frankly, you're able to kind of twist and turn so that the nasty pincers on the inside don't cut you too deeply. Nine bludgeoning, though. Uh, and you are now grappled by it. Um... Give me a moment here. I just want to... Mm, that's not what I need. There we go. Uh, it's it's now just going to kind of haul you up and shove your head into its tentacles. Can you please make a constitution saving throw? I will. I will also um, actually do uncanny dodge, so it would be half, so... Sure. That's only four points then of bludgeoning. So yeah, kind of you kind of twist and turn your turn your body and just in between the spikes, so it's only a grazing wound. Still has a hold of you, mind you, which is uncomfortable. Yep. And it was a Constitution save, save you needed. That is correct. Okay. As the tentacles slurp over your head, leaving this sort of slimy ooze behind. Mm. That's not great. That's a nine. Mm. Uh, you are poisoned. Fuck. As you feel the slime kind of seeping in through your skin, and kind of grossly, one of them kind of gives you the, a wet willy, and you can feel the residue behind as the uh, the slime kind of fills that ear, and you can only barely hear out of that one, and you can feel the sort of the sort of nauseating, uh, uh, gross uh, feeling from all of this. Um, that's that one. One of them will make a grab at Silas. Um, 18 to hit. Uh, let me find... Yep, that'll hit. As this one Actually, too. Hmm? No, I'm going to use the shield's reaction for plus two armor class against that specific attack. Okay. So that one misses. Uh, that one does indeed miss. Kind of bounces off the shield, the glancing blow, and then it swings in with the other one. Only gets a 10. I uh, was not able to grapple onto you. And the final one, which is also right there, um, that's a nat 20. 26 oh, to no. hit. Oh, gross. Uh, that's a total of 14 bludgeoning damage, and you are grappled. Okay. Uh, and it will try to eat your head. Please make a constitution saving throw. Uh, that is, is a fail. You are, uh, yeah. It is magical, but I actually just realized it's poison. Um, oh, yeah. oh, there's a second line here. <laughs> uh, very sorry, Annie. Until this poison ends, the target is paralyzed. Oh. It lasts, for, it lasts for one minute. You can make the save at the end of your turn, though. Each of your turns. Wonderful. Uh, unfortu or, well, fortunately, for Silas, um, while you feel the slime go over you, it has no effect whatsoever because you are mm. immune to poison. Um, and that is their turn. Gosh is not poisoned, but not happy. Uh, the poor little Nothic is going to try to... Uh, I think he's going to try to break free. Let's see if he can do it. Nothing but nothing but strength. Unfortunately, wriggling as he is, he is unable to break free. Uh, it is Annie's turn. You are poisoned. And paralyzed. And paralyzed. You can, however, Therefore, repeat the save if you want. Okay. Did we go over my turn? I think we did. Uh, Medric, you're at nine. And he's at 13. Okay. I thought I was in order. Never mind. <laughs> Herp the derp. Okay. I'll redo the save. There we go. Yes. So you feel that, that stuff seeping into your skin, and you're like, gross and you don't hear yourself say gross and then you realize more gross how does any uh throw off this poison basically like that like Aah! which you guys didn't see because my camera has decided to <laughs> mid game so the u factor is what makes it through 
Yeah. All right. That is, however, the end of Annie's turn. Medric, uh, your friends are Medric. all grappled. You for the moment are not. Oof. No, Silas looks like looks like he's in pretty bad shape. And is he like swimming right now? Like, if I were to go near him, do I just sink in the water? Or? Uh, the water uh, is about a foot and a half, uh, almost two feet up now. Silas and all of the uh, Silas and the other two by him are swimming. Uh, the one that has Gosh, Gosh was standing on that ledge, um, but is now being held aloft. The creatures right, are all in the uh, water, though. So I'll go one, two, three, four. I'll go next to Gosh. Okay. And like swing for the fences towards the crab dude holding him. Okay. So. Numbers. Proficiency plus strength, right? Uh, yes, your regular attack. 11. Unfortunately, how are you attacking, by the way? Hammer. Smash. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, like it kind of, from the ledge it kind of uh, glances off of the smooth, thick armor these things have. Their natural hide. Boo. And then as a bonus action, I'll summon a spiritual weapon next to the creature holding Silas. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh... Have your spiritual weapon here somewhere. The spell attack modifier. Probably under characters. There we go. And where is it going to be placed? Uh, right here. Uh, just the square below the eye. Square below the eye. Okay. Uh, let me just make sure you and can. Um, do, do, do. All right, you should be able to move it if you need to. Perfect. Yep, okay, so it will swing to add one directly to the west of it. Ten. Oh my god, I'm getting, I have shit rolls in it. Unfortunately, that is a miss. Thank you for trying. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, got to make sure I type in the right screen. And that's my turn. <laughs> okay. I was hoping to be, to be helpful, but I just did a whole lot of nothing. Sometimes those turns happen. They happen too I mean, it, it, it is the case that sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes you whiff and sometimes you don't. That was not really helpful. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, that brings us around to Silas's turn. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Well, let's I think of where to place this. Twenty foot radius. Well hopefully these things are smarter than the last things. I'm gonna drop a synaptic static. Ooh. Okay. Uh, two, three. I guess. Uh, That's a one and done attack. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, lasting effects, but it it is gone. Okay. Basically, I'm going to drop it twenty feet away so it hits these two at the edge. It'll be down like somewhere around here. So it's just going to take the two of them in? Yep. Unless I want to start nailing me and Annie with it as well, which I'd rather not. Um, what is it? A 20 uh, foot radius or something? Yes. Okay. Yep. It's a 20 foot radius area. So. Um, because. Yeah. 
Yeah, you can catch yourself in that, I'm afraid. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, what's the uh, what do they have to resist against? Uh, they have uh, if they have an int of two or higher, they have to make an intelligence save. Okay. Well, they so barely. Hopefully, they have an int of three. <laughs> they barely have an int <laughs> higher than two. Um, that is a ten from the one on the left. And a minus one from the one on the uh, right. So what's the effect? Uh, 8d6 psychic damage. Ooh. All right. And Ooh. muddled Splat. spots for a minute, uh, giving them minus 1d6 to all attack rolls, ability checks, and concentration checks. Ooh. Okay. Uh, they get a new save at the end of each, a new int save at the end of each turn. Uh, I can't roll 8 d6 on this, so I'll roll 4d6 twice. But you could, yeah. Alright. That's 20 and 15, so they take 35 psychic damage. Nice! <laughs> nice. Die, motherfuckers. And they are uh, befuddled uh, quite considerably. I'll say that the one that was holding you, is it just lets go. It doesn't even kind of register that he's there anymore. So you are no longer restrained. Yay! Uh, and they both seem to be kind of shifting around. Little little, little sparks appearing in their, well, I was going to say eyes, but they don't really have eyes so much as just sort of uh, indentations where they can see from. Um, I'll say that the, the, the tentacles on each of them just kind of go uh, stiff and splay out in all directions as they're kind of, it's the it's equivalent of, of like hair static. But for their, <laughs> but for their uh, tentacles. Tentacle static. Uh, and uh, both of them, uh, there's no real, well, there's a little bit of sound um, that you heard before, and it seems much more rapid and much more chaotic now. Uh, that seemed to have been a pretty substantial blow. Um, yeah, that, that would have flat out killed me. Yeah. They don't seem to be dead, but they're very much injured. Yeah. Um, I don't have any bonus actions that I can think of. Um, you do still have your move? Yeah, but if I move away... Well, actually, I suppose I got minus d6 to attack, so... Just keep yeah. swimming. I will move back a little bit so that maybe next time I can nail more of them. Uh, if I get it next time. I'll just move five feet over next to Annie. Okay, they will both give it a try. Um, sure. They get minus 1d6 on their attack rolls. So oh. it does. One of them was an 8 to begin with, so that's not going to hit. Uh, the other one, however, is right on the edge. So I'll roll d6. And that gives them down to... Uh, I think that's a... 18? Rolled well. Um, that would hit, but I'm going to use a charge out of the ring of Argenti Sagax to shield. Good plan. Um, it was a massive uh, claw that you feel like it would have rendered you quite considerably if it had struck. Um, it would have been yep. 14 damage. Oof. Uh, that is, uh, that's your move. Did you do a bonus action? Uh, no, I don't really have anything for that. Okay. That's fine. Um, that was good enough. That was really good. Uh, background yeah. to their turn. Uh, we'll start from the top. Uh, this one that has Gosh is going to try to... It's going to try to smash your way at Medric. Can't really... Uh, it's a little awkward for it to do so, but it's going to try to do so anyway. Uh, the awkwardness is going to cause it to have some difficulty. If I can get this to work properly, I can't, so I'll just do it this way. Uh, huh. There we go. Uh, pincer attack, uh, that is uh, an 11 <laughs> to try to hit you. Uh, and once more, we'll try to... No noticing now that... Actually, wait, they are really dumb. Let's see if they can notice. Uh, they do not notice that uh, their prey is not, uh, is still struggling, so they will 
Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It can't really do much with its other pincer because its other pincer is being held or being used. Uh, the one uh -huh. facing off against Annie. Uh, Annie is uh, paralyzed. But Didn't I shake off that? Oh, sorry, you did shake off that. And uh, part of being grappled is also, and the, the condition ends if you're incapacitated, which part of being paralyzed is being incapacitated. Um, not in this particular case, because it's grappled as a different ability. Okay, because that's just the status de description. Uh, there's the you got you ended up with two with three statuses. You end up with grappled, poisoned, and paralyzed. Yes, and um, part of the grappled condition is the condition ends if the grapple. Uh, oh, if the grappler. Sorry. Yeah, the yeah. creature I, grappling. I, yeah, yeah, it didn't get knocked out. My, my dyslexic brain misread that. Nope, that's Continue. that's perfectly fine. Uh, it is going to do a backhand to Silas, however. Um, somewhat awkwardly, because it's holding on to something at the moment. Uh, however, that will be an 18 to hit. Uh, shield is still up, I believe, until my next turn, so it misses. Okay. Uh, and noticing... Well, are you, are you noticeably wriggling, Annie? Um, not really. Okay. Uh, then we'll come down to it actually being able to notice it, that you have broken its uh, uh, thing, and it does not notice you. So it's not going to try to not going to try to poison you again because it doesn't have you. Didn't grab the other. Uh, the other two. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they're they're all kinds of messed up. Um, Actually, I'm. Hmm. I think they're going to retreat. So you see them sink down into the water, roughly where they came before. They do not seen to be happy about this. Uh, Can I have an attack of opportunity on the one next to Gosh? Uh, no, those two are staying. It's the other two okay. um, that were synaptic shocked, who are like, well, "This is not what we wanted." This is uh, supposed to be an easy meal. <laughs> It's uh, supposed I... to be a snack, not a full full course meal. <laughs> this is too much effort. My brain hurts. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, I think that Gosh is going to just go on and claw like hell, wriggling to try to get free. Um, but instead of actually wriggling, just kind of trying to claw away. Um, unfortunately. Oh, that's the second one. The second one lands. So he manages to scrape up alongside one of the, the claws that's holding onto him. Does not manage to break free. And does not manage to severely injure it, but enough to be noticeable. Um, the water now is about the two and a half feet level. Uh, going on to Annie's turn. You are still uh, grappled, but you are not poisoned or paralyzed. Exactly, which is wonderful. Um, I'm going to try to stab the thing that has me grappled in the face. Okay. Or whatever it looks like its face. It's kind of a large, lumpy part in the top of its head, out of which multiple tentacles are coming out. So, face-ish? Yeah, face adjacent. Huh. Um, I'm, I am the dagger that I have is vice, so. Okay. So a little bit of a 17. glow. That is a hit. Perfect. Does it have all, all of its hit points? Uh, that one does. Okay. But you do so, not. So, piercing damage Ooh. of seven. Okay. Oh, I saw the 32 at the bottom one. Oh, wow. But that's the sneak that's attack. That's if everything goes through. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Do you get uh, sneak attack because I'm here? An ally is within five feet. More. Yeah. The 19 sneak attack plus seven, so that's 26. There we go. Sweet. Um, yes, so you, as as it reaches its other claw out to try to grasp ah! at uh, Silas, you're like, stab, 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 stab in the face. Uh, and uh, you managed to find some nasty purchase. Doubt, stab in the face. <laughs> Pretty much. This thick, greenish blood starts to pour out of its, uh, out of its tentacle face um, as you are successful in, uh, in hurting it. Um, it's, let's see, is it going to be upset by this? Because it didn't notice that you were... Um, it didn't notice that you were f not, 
Oh, words. It didn't notice that you were not paralyzed. That's like a triple negative. Um, I was so no longer it, paralyzed. <laughs> right. Uh, however, with the considerable amount of, of uh, pain that you just induced, uh, it is not exist interested in you anymore and does let you go and backs away. That will give you an, an attack of opportunity from both of you. Oh, sorry, it's your turn anyway. Like, Never mind. Yeah, it does, it does let you go of you, but it hasn't moved yet. You can sense it not wanting to be there. Uh, I am going to give Silas advantage to hit it. Okay. Basically hoping that me stabbing it in the face has its attention on me more than it has it on him. Okay. Okay. So kind of stab and, and, and yell and scream and kind of get his attention. Seems yeah, reasonable. Basically. Um, Medric. Very dignified. <laughs> in the moment, it's what's called for. Uh, Medric. Great. I've been a bit uh, distracted due to stuff real life, but yes. Well, the two that were that had once been attacking Silas, based probably from the big crazy weird thing that happened to them, have now retreated back down into the water. Um, but the other two still remain. Um, Annie is busily right. stabbing one in the face, and Gosh is busily mm -hmm. scratching at the one that's got, got him still. And I will busily hammer down on the one next to Gosh again, hopefully successfully this time. Right. And ten. Ten, unfortunately, <laughs> is not enough. The spiritual weapon will hit the thing. Fourteen. Please tell me that's enough. <laughs> Unfortunately, it glances off its really tough armor. <laughs> okay. Well, that's my turn, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, it happens. You got this, gosh. <laughs> Don't die. Uh, that makes it Silas's turn again. Um. Yes, yeah, Silas is just gonna. Um, let's see, bonus action to charge up the staff, and then Booming Blade. Nice. The one that's uh, holding, or was holding on to Annie? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, I don't think I can reach the other one yet, but uh, we'll see what this does. All right. Wackity with the staff, the humming sound starts to form around it. That is, that is most definitely a hit. Uh, where's damn it? I don't remember what the oh, nine bludgeoning damage, uh, seven thunder damage, no crit, no hex, so just 16 damage. Okay, that is a substantial hit to this one who just got its face. Uh, oh, actually, you had advantage on that wall anyway. I guess it didn't matter, you still is the highest, yeah. the first one. Um, but yes, uh, it is substantially wounded by that. And why is this not showing up? There we go. Um, so we had a total of nine plus seven, so 16. Nice. Uh, and now that, uh, I b believe that's the one that leaves an aura around them in case they move. Yes. Okay. Um, as now this forms around them, the thrumming kind of vibrating the water around it as well, turning it up a little bit as it continues to pour inward, uh, now up to three, almost three and a half feet up. Uh, it is their turn. That one is going to retreat or try to. It's going to be very badly for it, but it doesn't really know that because they're not really smart. So we'll resolve first the booming blade. What is that a, a a save or just damage? Uh, no, it just takes damage. Okay. Uh, four thunder. Okay. I would uh, like to use my reaction to try to stab it again. I had a feeling that was coming. <laughs> I pity it now. Uh, you won't get uh, backstab on it because it has moved away from the ally, which would have been within five feet. Yep, but it's now hurt, so it gets extra damage from vice anyway. Oh yeah, yeah, it's it's bad. It's just yep, not and all I'm the bad. Try to hit it too. So nine damage. Uh, was there a hit in there somewhere? Oh, did I? I missed that step. <laughs> I uh, mean, you're likely to hit it, but <laughs> uh, twelve no. total does not hit, unfortunately. As a kind of, Sorry. it's it's. It's one of those things where you, you're used to retreating humanoid opponents, and this one, with all of its weird <laughs> appendages, is just not in the right places, and that's just all wrong. 
Um, uh, 15 Silas also misses. A, Silas did get a 15 attack of opportunity for four bludgeoning. Yeah, unfortunately, a 15 also misses uh, as it's kind of swimming back, kind of partially twisting its body so it can so it can face downward to try to get the hell away um, as it too starts to retreat down into the water um, maybe joining up with the other ones the other ones are now uh, kind of out of sight they seem to have moved even further below um, where they originally had appeared uh, as if they do not know where they came from the final one however the stalwart uh, is going to try to smash away at uh, Medric once more. Uh, it is having not a great day. That's uh, two of us. <laughs> however, that is a 15 to hit. Nope. Okay. Uh, now knowing, however, that its quarry has not uh, stopped moving, it will attempt the tentacles to grapple onto uh, or to swarm over Gosh, uh, who has to make a constitution saving throw and you fails. This, uh, oh, as no. the tentacles kind of wrap around it, you can see it kind of uh, see Gosh half-heartedly try to make another scratch, and then its arms just sort of lock in place uh, mid-attack. Uh, and now it's going to try to take its food and go as it will try to uh, retreat now, having kind of seen the rest of them move. It will retreat down into the water with Gosh in hand. That does give you an opportunity to try to to uh, yeah, uh, attack it. Um, so please do something. Yeah, I'll, I'll grapple him. Okay, you're gonna grapple him? Okay. Um, yeah, because I mean, if I hit him, like I'm probably not gonna watch out. Hmm, attack of opportunity grapple. Sure, why not? Uh, you'll try. I'll to, just grab on to Gosh. It, it'll be it'll be it'll be one of those chain chain grapples where everybody's holding everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. So go ahead and make a uh, uh, acrobatics or athletics, depending on how you're going to do That's your grapple. That's going to be athletics. Okay, and it will. Hey, that twenty. It will. Uh, well, well, if it <laughs> rolls in that twenty. Actually, no, it can't resist that. <laughs> so, uh, you managed to, home, you to, to hold <laughs> on to this thing as it's trying to get away. And it's sort of, it's not, it is pretty strong. Um, but you're managing to hold it there and maybe put, because it's also trying to, to, to nosh on Gosh. Uh, it seems to uh, uh, have not enough ability to kind of get away. Uh, you now have it held. Uh, that is their turn. Gosh's turn. Gosh can try to not be paralyzed. Um, Gosh is still paralyzed by a lot. Uh, on to Annie's turn. As you can see, most of them have retreated, but this last one has a firm hold on Gosh, tried to get away, and Medric now has a firm hold on it. Okay. Uh, I would... Do, do, do. Stab him in the face, too, now. I mean, yes. Um, I'm going to throw, yeah, I'm going to come up here and throw, or stab him with the, with vice. Okay. He has most, de most definitely been hurt before. He's been hurt before, and now he's just trying to figure 17. out his relationship status. Uh, that, that? that is a hit. Perfect. Okay. So that would be eight piercing, ten, uh, two fourths of ten, and then fourteen sneak attack because allies. So twenty-four. Um. Wow. Yep. Uh, that is seven. a pretty severe hit. Uh, you you see it now around the the creature in the water as the water continues to rise and kind of meets it halfway. The churning green goo that's coming out. Uh, and also, uh, both of you, actually Silas would notice as well, as it kind of screams into the water, um, echoing down through the water. Um, louder than it would have been in air because of the way that the, the water conducts the sound, it probably has just called for help. Uh, that is Annie's move in action. Do you have a bonus you want to do? Um, 
I'm going to... Uh, I forget what I can do as bonus action. Give me two seconds. <laughs> Most classes could, don't really have assist, much for bonus, but, but yeah. But rogues do. Uh, I mean, the help one is your biggest one, but... Uh, yeah, but I moved. Yeah. So. Oh, right. Or actually, actually no, I, I, I no, can no. use that one. Yeah, yeah you got it's range. It's steady aim if I, if, the, if I don't move. Ah, that's uh, so cool. yeah, I'm going to give... Um, I can't help for saves. So yeah, I'll, I'll give Medric uh advantage on on hitting this dude okay because i need it <laughs> kind of the same same effect i think as what you did for for uh, silas where you're basically getting hope, in its face and poking me, <laughs> hope that me po stabbing it in the face is enough of a distraction all right uh medrick your friend and ally has joined and has now grabbed its attention away what would you Excellent. like to do we'll hit the guy holding gosh hopefully successfully this time all right Smash! Um, you do have advantage on that first roll. Smash! Oh, okay. Oof. 15. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, 15 is not enough. Uh, as perhaps the awkwardness from you kind of grabbing onto it and then trying to like bash the way it and the way it's squirming and, and twisting around. Uh, unfortunately, it still kind of finds that 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 odd smooth angle around its armor. All right. Well, then the, then the spiritual weapon is going to go smash. All right. Or not. Um, <laughs> spiritual weapon, uh, probably it was just about to hit, but then it twitched the, as, as you moved and it unfortunately slid out of the way. Um, it's and not I'll going anywhere, but it's as, also, as much as I can. it's also quite, quite tough and resisting. Um, and you're not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. Uh, you've done the action and bonus. It's up to Silas now. Um, Silas, you can make a perception check. Uh, let's see. 16. Okay. Based on where you are and where you knew the others went to, you now realize they are no longer swimming away. Perhaps brought on by the cry of anguish by their brethren, or perhaps something else. Um, but how I. He'll swim down a little bit, so he's entirely underwater, so it's a little easier to see. Uh, I just was, uh, he, his dark vision is only 60 feet. Does he still see them? Just at the very edge. Okay. And it's like the three of them are just kind of waiting there? Um, it's more of you knew that they were, they were swiftly swimming away, and suddenly they have stopped swimming away. Okay, so... Silas is just going to uh, wait and see what happens. Okay. I want to prep a spell, but I don't want to waste the spell if they don't come closer. So he's not going to cast yet. He's just going to wait under there and see what's going on. Okay. Uh, so you're not holding an action then? Uh, he'll take a swipe at one of them. Uh, he'll, uh, he'll booming blade at one if something comes close enough. Okay. But that's it. Okay. So you're kind of ready, holding that just in case. Um, it is their turn. And uh, as you watch them, uh, Silas, you see the three of them now start to quickly swim over and then up towards where their brethren is being held. Um, the one in the lead will just get there but not be able to do anything. The other two are still down in the water. A considerable amount. I'm just going to represent them like that, um, but they have no no actions this time. But they are definitely okay. looking to go help their brethren. Uh, Silas will yell um, psychically, yell to the others that uh, they're coming back. Great. Okay. Uh, Let's release Gosh. Gosh, Gosh is paralyzed. What is Gosh going to be able to do? No, uh, Gosh, it continues to be paralyzed since they're so good at Gosh, it. Gosh is an abomination serving an abomination who worships an abomination. True. Also, Silas doesn't uh, care if Gosh dies. Your guide here, but that's that's neither here nor there. Yeah, uh, exactly. Well, he was our guide along the first third of the trip. Yeah, he was now the only one who could translate the the runes that were on the walls too. 
And who kn who knows if there's any other runes we need to yeah. translate. Regardless, Gosh is not moving. Annie, what would you like to do? Uh, I will and actually, stab him in the face. From where you are, you can tell the large presence of one of them has just gotten right up to where uh, below where the other one that you're fighting is. Okay. Um, I would like to stab the one that's holding Gosh again. All right. Seems to be popular. Um, so... Da, da, da. Uh, 16. 16 unfortunately misses. 17 is kind the of, lucky number. As it seems to twitch a little bit, its head plate kind of comes down, blocking your attack from its, uh, its uh, soft and chewy tentacles. And I will once again give Medric advantage on the next attack to it. On the okay. Or actually pulling Gosh from his grasp. Uh, I think that's the better. Do you have to yeah. specify what the action is, or how does that, how does that work? It's like the normal help action. Okay, so it is for a specific yeah. action. Yeah. So so he's been attacking it, so I'll, I'll I'll help attacking it. Okay. Uh, Medric, Annie has its attention still focused on her. Gosh has not All moved right. yet. So it was advantage to re to retrieve Gosh from his grasp. From his grasp. Uh, no, uh, I think she to, changed to it. To attack the. the All right. Creature. Yeah, because you've been attacking it, so. Smash. No. Smash. Okay, twenty-two should be a hit. Twenty-two is a hit. Finally. <laughs> so weapon one d eight plus strength. Hey, max damage eleven. Crunch. Nice, and indeed there is a crunch as the hammer kind of. Puts a little little cracked dent into its uh, its hard surface. Um, let's see here. It will let him go. It will decide whether it's going to. Uh, uh, it indeed lets go of uh, of Gosh, who sort of sort of sinks down a little bit into the water, and then just kind of floats there on the surface. The water now about three and a half feet tall. Um, that was your action. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, is, is the crab guy dead or? Oh, no. Okay, well, the spiritual weapon's going to hit it. Or try to. Ten. Okay, so it's going to swing threateningly, vaguely. Yeah, unfortunately, when it let go of Gosh, it kind of bobbed a little bit at the time, and the weapon goes right on by. You're staying where you're at? All right. I'll just grab Gosh and drag him. A little further away, if that's okay, or would it, would that just make it difficult terrain? Or? Um, it would be difficult terrain to move with him. He's not resisting it, so it's easy enough just to reach out and grab him. Um, okay. Where are you moving to? Just here. Okay. Farther away from the crab dudes. So just the, like next to you. the creature will make a, a half-hearted attempt to to strike at you. Um, okay, I'll just stay here. Then I forgot about that. I thought it was gone. No, it's not dead. It's not dead at all. It's just upset. Okay, um, I'll stay here then, because I don't want to risk Gosh getting to zero HP. <laughs> okay. Um, then it is Silas's turn. You can now see that one of them is right below where the wounded one that had uh, Gosh in hand is. The other two are going to be there this round, or on their next okay. round, essentially. They're very close. Well, Silas thanks them for getting uh, bunching up again. And we'll fire off a second synaptic static. <laughs> uh, it's a little tricky because you can't do it beyond the wall. No, um, I, he's not going to be able to catch all of them. Uh, the only way to catch the one next to Annie is to actually catch her as well. Uh, he's just going to catch this one and the other two down here. Okay. And that was an uh, intelligence save, I believe? Yes. Okay. Uh, they are not intelligent. By uh, all means, you can try to try to hit the one beside me. I can handle it. Um, she oh. is intelligent, so oh. she can handle it. Okay. The spiritual left won't care. <laughs> uh, the one that was holding Gosh has failed. Uh, the one that was underneath him has failed. The one that is to the left underneath got a minus one. 
and the last one got a zero. <laughs> so that is failures across the board That's for them. 23 psychic damage. Uh, Annie Oof. said to go for it. So, yeah, Annie gets to make a int save. Intelligence saving throw. 20, no problem. Uh, is yep, it half damage on save? Ability. Sorry? Is it half damage on save? Yes. Okay, so still another uh, 11, I think you said? 23? Yeah, uh, yeah, it was 23 total, so 11 for Annie. All right. Uh, and Annie does not get muddled thoughts either. That's only on a success. So, yeah. Or on a failure, Kind right? of crapped out on damage, but still, that should help. Oh, they are all quite uh, quite uh, damaged. And once again, this weird thing of all of their tentacles kind of going straight out uh, as they are, uh, uh, as their brain fries. Hey, all right. Cerebellum. That <laughs> is Silas's go. Well, that was I Silas's had barely action. been scratched so far, so I, I, could, yeah. I could have even taken the full, full damage. Mm -hmm. I'll remember no, I don't that. Have an, actually, I don't have a bonus action. Uh... No, yeah, Silas will stay kind of where he is. That's fine. Okay. That's his turn. Um, as kind of has happened before, the two below have stopped and have now turned to go swimming downward once more, quickly away. Uh, the two that are there, um, the one below wasn't within uh, actual range of uh, Annie anyway, so it just kind of turns and dives uh, the one that was engaged with everyone, it's kind of like the the, uh, the the claws up, uh, straight out sticking um, uh, uh, tentacles, and that sort of slowly backing away, like okay, 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 uh, as it will disengage I won't and take try the snack, to I guess. <laughs> try to uh, to move away. Uh, it won't get quite as far. It does go downward, so it's not just ten feet away. It's actually ten feet away and twenty feet down. Is it quickly going to start? Can I use swims? my attack of opportunity to shove it? Uh, it it disengaged, so you don't get an attack okay. of opportunity. But you can kind of kick after it as if you're trying to shove it. Um, you're just not uh, close enough as it the was careful. The intention is there. Yeah, yeah, the intention is there. Um, that's their turn. Uh, Gosh is still paralyzed. Um, and is still paralyzed. <laughs> However, um, you can tell Silas that they have gone and retreated even further than we were, where they were, were close to where they were before. Yeah, he can't see them any more than... Uh... The water rises to about four feet. Okay, so we've put He's the gem in place. Uh, we need to go get Dudek. Yeah. Back to the fire room. Back to the fire um, room. And I'll give Gosh a 1D uh, level 1 cure wounds. Okay. Gosh will continue to try to resist the poison. He gets nine oh. hit points back. Just as the spell lands, you see Gosh kind of wriggle and twist and try to right itself from uh, nearly drowning in the water as the poison is finally resisted. Uh, but just in time. Welcome back. Oh, it's 1d8 plus modifier. Let me reroll that. Okay. Okay, can we just take the shitty roll? <laughs> I'll take the d6, sure. Okay. <laughs> um, that was nine, yeah. Yeah. Um, it kind of declines, uh, uh, declines its head a little bit as if trying to bow, but then it kind of gets its mouth in the water and coughs a bit. Um, All right, we're going back to the fire room. Um, so I'll let him know just so he's aware of like what's what's about to happen. Yeah, Silas will tell people to get ready and then get ready to use the mage hand to flip the switch. Okay. All of you line up, uh, not right against the wall. Well, actually, in this case, you would be against the wall. That'd be fine because it's not going to be pushing your direction. Um, and once more, uh, the walls shift. And I will just drag all of you. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. I dragged the walls by mistake. <laughs> so, uh... The universe collapses. This goes this way. Uh, go down to that layer. Uh, this 
this goes that way. Um, and all of you move into that next room and find the fire hotter than before. Possibly because it just came out of water. We all start steaming yeah. immediately. Um, but the, the large pillar of, of fire still in the center um, still kind of makes moving through this room very difficult. Uh, you see your whirlwind of fire still on the pedestal trying to uh, wrap itself around the uh, the switch. We're still actually still hovering over it, still kind of almost protectively owning it. Um, there is a, a, a rumble, a uh, crackle of delight that you understand, Medric, uh, as it speaks to you and Ignan about happy I'm to sorry, see Chris, you again. We actually could have used your help. I will come with you. Right, next, we're going to the room on the other side, I believe. The crystal's uh, back in the previous room. Uh, so we can't get across the other room. Yeah. So we kind of have to go through the water one. The oh, right. center of the room is a um, set uh, is kind of an open chamber with stairs that go down and spiral around. The problem with going too close to that central pillar of flame is that it is very burny. Um, okay, it I thought, might like, the be possible to move. Like... Well, there there is the the stairs spiral around the the uh, the pillar of flame, which is now engorged, and essentially is licking over the the, the stairway now. Um, you can try to make your way around the opening, but it is very uh, very narrow, and you will still be taking some fire damage even if you move that way. You can certainly do it. You can certainly try anyway. I should well, try also... something else. Uh, well, once we get to the void room, we can't cross that. Well, very carefully, but we all know what that what happens. But <laughs> I'll ask Crispy. It's like, is there a way to turn the flames off just for like a minute or so, just so me and my also, where's can pass? Dudek? Is the question. Um, you do not see him. Uh, fuck. Because that was the entire point of coming back into this room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Find Dudek. Now. None of the water from the previous room splashed into this one, did it? It did not. Okay. Despite the um, fact that it was well over the uh, bottom half of the wall. Yeah. Guys, I think each of these rooms is its own dimension. And I think when we put the stone in the right socket, it opens up a portal to that element's plane. I think that's where the lobster things came from. And I think that's what's at the base of the pillar of fire. I think that's how we operate the gate, is once we've opened a gate to each of the elemental planes, that will somehow let us use this as a gate to wherever we're supposed to go. That's a possibility. Uh, I don't do magic things, so... In your head, you hear the the... Um, strange, sibilant voice of Gosh. Argenti Sagax, masters of dimensions and planes. This demonstrates power, but concentrated not. Spread out power to each room. Yeah, I think this room and the water room and the void room, we definitely had them in the right spot. So I think if we can make it back to the first room, if we can figure out which spot that one has to go into, maybe that'll activate this. Uh, as to where Dudek is, I don't know. Possibly in the void room. Yeah, crispy. Hopefully he's trying to regroup in, in the other one, because that's kind of where we had, had been regrouping. Yeah. Uh, crispy kind of spins over. What happened to Dudek? Other one... Bounce and leap. Fly into next space. Open next space. space. That way? And I'll point towards the east. Yes. Slipped by walls. Okay, so he's in the void room. Yep. Um, we can try going through the void room or the water room. Uh, I suspect he's just gonna keep going around until he meets us 
he, he might stay. We, we had been kind of regrouping in the earth room, so. All right. Yeah. I, th I think we should go to the water room because if he keeps going clockwise trying to find us and we keep going clockwise trying to find him, we're yeah, not we'll going to be chasing, chasing each other forever. And that uh, way you guys don't have to cross the fire. So, uh, Crispy, if you want to come along, it's going to be watery, but there's not going to be any enemies. Hopefully. If there are, you know what to do. I I don't know if he can come with us, but sure. Well, he can try. Well, he might be stuck to this realm. The same way that the water couldn't enter this room. Well, I guess we'll find out. Mm. All right, Crispy, if we don't come back, it was nice meeting you. I stay, or, I, I, I mean, go? Yeah, you, yeah you, I mean, you go with us. You, you can come with us, but there's a chance you might not be able to cross. Hmm. Well, I try. And it burns yes. a little brighter uh, in the moment with determination. Um, so, what are you doing? You're going to activate the wall and go to the water realm? Yep. Uh, yep. Everybody get ready. And I'll reply to Crispy and Egdon what's, what's about to happen. It seems excited and trepidatious at the same time flies over to you uh, flies almost kind of like it's wrapping you in part of itself like it's trying to hold your hand but it's not very substantial um, it is very hot however uh, you do take I'm gonna roll it here do to do, do one point of fire damage roll down uh, so it starts to singe a little bit, but it's not bothering you just yet because of your resistance. Uh, I will have acrobatics or athletics checks for everyone, please. As you make your... Athletics. Uh, hmm, he's not as good at that as I hoped he would be. And... Uh, 10, okay. This is gonna get interesting. Uh, 13, 10, and what was... Was that the 7? Seven. Seven? Okay. Yep. <laughs> so, um, as the walls move, uh, Silas and Medric, you find yourself trying to, to, uh, to leap around these and end up caught in them. Um, so, uh, first of all, i got to do the switcheroo. Grind, grind, grind. Oh. Make new characters. <laughs> uh, and the other one. Keep getting my, my directions backwards. Uh, as you find yourself uh, pushed deeper in the room, uh, um, oh, and I gotta check for him because he's gonna do that himself. No problem. As you find yourselves uh, split up, um, Annie, you easily move around to the other side. You see uh, Gosh also slip underneath. Um, you notice from the other side of the room, as you see very agilely coming around the wall, you notice uh, um, uh, Dudek slip out from under the wall and join you in the water room. However, you're somewhat surprised to see that Medric and Silas are not with you. I'd like a dexterity saving throw from each of you. Ow! We'll be right there. Ten. Okay. Seven. All right. Unless it's magic. <laughs> Uh, it's sheer physical force that's kind of shoving you towards the open the open pit at the center. Um, so from the fall, as each of you goes tipping over into the into the uh, the hole, you each take eight bludgeoning damage, uh, and uh, also two fire damage, reduced to one for Medric. Um, that fire is continuous, so any time you spend in here is going to be too close to the engorged pillar of flame in the center. Um, I wonder if I can put this right on the boundary. Can it see into both? 
Hey, I can do that. Did Crispy make it through? Or? Uh, Crispy's following you. Okay. So when you decided not to leave the room, it decided not to leave the room either. All right. Um, so it's kind of hovering over you, and I'll put you guys kind of in the center point, which is essentially the pit. You both basically have fallen down and landed on the set of stairs, which goes around the pit in a, in a spiral fashion. Um, and again, the engorged flame in the middle of the room. Um, oh, shit. I'll grab Silas and, like, push him up. Like, push him up where we just fell from. <laughs> Uh, you basically fell two two floors, <laughs> so okay. uh, it's not just a, a five foot up; it's like ten feet up to the edge of this of this uh, pit. Uh, whoever oh. you do, um, I will. Well, you guys aren't really there yet, so <laughs> once you get to the top, I'll remind me to tell you something. But um, are you just scrambling out of there? That's what Silas is doing. <laughs> Better to look around first. Uh, okay. Medrick can make a perception check. Uh, and Silas can make a scrambling to get the hell out of their check. It's just moving at half speed. Nine perception. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, with the acrobatics, I will say you only take half damage as you're basically trying to keep away from the flame, but there's not that much distance. Uh, and kind of uh, spiraling upward to get up and outside to the roughly safe area. Um, Medric, you're kind of taking a look uh, down. You can kind of see that about 20 feet down from where you are, the center point of where the pillar of flame is firing, there does seem to be a congestion point down at that very small point. Um, both what of you take... It looks as though it's not just a, a, a large open hole out of which fire is coming, but it looks as though it comes out of a very small spout, almost. Um, both of you take three fire damage, though, from that experience. That's already counting your reduction, Medric. Okay. Uh, basically, both of you had resistance from, from the actions you were doing. Um, Medric did not come up with you, Silas, but you are now safely on the edge of this. What would Medric like to do up. in this instance? So, if it's just coming up from like a small thing, like, is there a way it could be blocked? Um, probably. Um, uh, make a make an Arcana check. Uh oh. <laughs> Four. Four. I mean, it's undoubtedly magical of some kind, but. Yes, you probably could throw a rock on it or something, but this is a pretty la large pillar of flame, so... And very, I'll very hot. I'll keep that in mind, but I'll go after Silas. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'll, I'll mention that to my colleagues later. Okay. Kill yeah, one more, one more point of fire damage for you. Okay. As both of you reach the very top, um, Medra kind of strolling along slightly uh, uh, your your armor and everything is also attuned to your natural resistance to to fire uh, so it's kind of just a little singed around the edges Silas on the other hand um, you, all of your edges are singed at this point uh, and you can feel this this heavy it would be sweaty except for the fact that the sweat dries almost instantly <laughs> um, as you reach the top you notice the the walls now where you had seen different symbols before. Now the symbols seem to align and close. Um, you can see the there are rectangles or squares on one side and will be effectively diamonds on the other. Now for that moment while you're contemplating that, we go back to Annie and Dudek. Dudek looks surprised to see only Annie there. Uh, Gosh is always looking surprised. What does Annie do? The water so, is now receded down to below that uh, ledge around the room. So my plan, because we've been separated, I've mentioned that, like, the idea of the Earth Room as a regrouping place. So that is what I'm going to do. Okay. Is go to the Earth Room and stay there because I have planted that seed of that's what I think Dudek would have done, which obviously he didn't. <laughs> but... That, that is my my intention. Okay. Please roll a d20 for me while you're at it. Uh-oh. Oh, nice. Maybe. 
Okay. You each uh, take 19 damage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not exactly that mean. Um, sometimes. Let's see here. I just have to look something up. I believe... Okay. Make a perception check, would you, for me, please? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Perception. Fifteen. Okay. Um, along the surface of the water, it kind of um, starting from the back of the room, kind of where those, the uh, the the mounting point where you put the crystal up, but in the water itself, you notice a slight bulge in the water, um, probably no more than a couple of inches across, but it seems to be long and stretched out. And as it sort of lazily moves across the room, you see the bulge kind of rise up into a wave and a sort of head appears, still watery and translucent, but it seems to regard you. Um, it would be um, a few inches in in diameter around. Uh, it has a almost a, a snake-like appearance and kind of looks at you and kind of watches back and forth, but takes no other action. Across the other okay. side of the room, uh, Dudek calls out to you, Hail there! Um, was this the plan? I'm sorry, I got caught up in the other room. Uh, not really. Um, I'm going to go back to the Earth room, because I put, I mentioned that that's kind of been a hub, so if if we get separated, we might as well just wait in the safest of the, the four rooms so far. It was rumbling a bit when I was in there, but I, I think it was safe. Well, that's unnerving. The water starts to lap up over your feet. It's about a half, uh, or about a foot deep now. I'll want mosey over the edge over to, to here and usher Gosh to follow. Okay. The uh, lever in the middle of the room is about three feet up, hovering above the water itself. Okay. Um. Meanwhile, what's happening in the other room? Count down to flipping the lever. Yep, let's let's uh, attempt the water again. <laughs> the... Basically, all right, Sorry. Crispy, we're gonna do we're gonna do this properly this time. Silas has been uh, the one doing the lever, so I'm just waiting, ready for it to move. Okay. Um, Hoping that... that Silas doesn't die. That uh, creature or that movement in the water um, mm -hmm. sort of keeps swimming over and looking at you um, and kind of seems to be observing. Uh, it's rising with the tide of the water, now almost a foot and a half uh, deep. Uh, let us... Hmm, okay. Um, so you're just going to trigger the switch in the fire room? Yep. Okay. As fast as we can. Um, as you're in there for a few more seconds, you notice that the pillar of fire is getting hotter and hotter. There's less space to be able to uh, move in. Um, you trigger the switch. So, everybody has to make acrobatics rolls once more. Um, Does that athletics works too? Or? Uh, athletics or acrobatics. I'm fine with either one. Athletics, 15. Um, <laughs> okay, I did it. And... All right. Ten. Uh, just have to check a couple of things here. No problem. And uh, okay. So <laughs> uh, you see, uh, Gosh, vanish through the wall. No problem. Um, Medric, you managed to slip through the wall. And the the whirlwind of fire, no problem at all. It doesn't even have to do anything. It literally just moves around the wall. Um, as if it's... Because uh, uh, it, it, can, it can move through small areas and it's not a problem. Unfortunately, however, uh, 
Oh uh, yeah, I gotta do the thing too. Sorry, just a second. Gotta rotate that one. Uh, no, uh, yes, that one. And move that one. Um, unfortunately. Oh shit. Uh, Silas is caught by the wall and shoved in. I'll need another dexterity saving throw for you. Yeah, please make this. <laughs> um, Annie is also caught. Natural point. No problem. So, Anyone. yeah, even though it catches catches you, you kind of lean into it, and you're able to kind of hold on. You find yourself on the other side of the room, but you have managed to keep to that small edge that's there um, and then managed to kind of dodge around it so you stay in the room. Um, uh, Annie, you're able to uh, not lose your footing into the water and kind of maintain maintain your position, but you don't manage to make it out of the room. So, what would you like to do? I'm just going to go where the earth room is. How that, long that's, is that's kind of been my plan. Um, I'm assuming I, following me. Can all of you... Uh, let's see, what am I going to call this? Can all of you make... Let's call this a survival check. Sure, that sounds reasonable. <laughs> That's a plus two. Seven. Okay. Three. Three, <laughs> okay. Uh, this is something for which he's proficient. And he is not. Uh, do we get one from uh, 12 from uh, mm -hmm. Silas? Okay. So simultaneously, Silas and Dudek, in different rooms, having both suffered the problem, realize a potential solution. Um, in three of the rooms, there is a recessed center of the room through which the bottom wall would not move. By standing right next to the wall, you're standing on the ledge where you're immediately vulnerable to the wall moving. I'm not moving into the fiery spot. It is something you realize, not necessarily helping you as much in the fire as you would like, but it is something you realize. Uh, Dudek says the same. Uh, in order to vo avoid the wall, we should just be in the water. When it passes overhead, we can easily pop up out of it. All right. Uh, Crispy, just hover right above the water, not in the water. Um, and on the far side, that, that fire elemental is kind of hovering, and then it starts rising because the water itself is rising pretty rapidly. Um, and it seems to be, it's sort of uh, stretching itself out a little bit. So you get this whirl, this sort of corkscrew whirling going on. I don't like this. It's okay. It's, it's, it's not going to last very long. So what would you like to do? That is going to stay where he is and hit the switch again. Okay. I'll ask Chris P to hit the switch. Or we can just wait until Silas hits the switch, I guess. That that was my my plan, just because Silas has been the one controlling the, the door so far. Yeah, and Silas didn't right. look that great in retrospect. <laughs> Which direction is Silas intending to move? He's not crossing through the fire, so he's going to go down to the void room. All right, then. Um, all of you can make an acrobatics check now with advantage, except for... Uh, Gosh, who does not know this is happening. Uh, athletics or acrobatics? Athletics or acrobatics, yes. Either one is fine. 24 um, and... Yeah, 24. Okay. 11. 24. I can water like a champion. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, which direction is, are Annie, Dudek, and Medrick intending to go? To the Earth Room. Southeast. Okay. Um, oh, two deck. Nope, two decks there. Um, and oof, good thing it's at advantage. <sighs> Despite realizing this, two deck rolled a four and a five, uh, and oh, no. is still trapped within the water room. 
Uh, Medrick <laughs> and Annie both manage to uh, move in, as does uh, the Elder Spark. Uh, and you arrive in the other room to find uh, Gosh kind of flat on his back, having been struck by the thing, but there's no ground to go in. And you can see the sort of track along the ground where it was dragged for a little while before it was to scramble <laughs> over. Um, okay, everybody hit the ground, so nothing's going to hit us. Let's we'll see. I need to do this, first of all. So this moves this way, and this moves this way. Um, as for... Uh, oops, as for Silas, from where you are, you're unable to kind of clip over the thing, so you do end up going into the next room. Uh, however, now make a dexterity saving throw. Oh no. Twenty. Whew. All right. Uh, you manage to... You manage to catch just the really edge of the ledge without falling off. So you don't take any damage, thankfully, uh, but you are perched on the edge of that area. Um, now, where uh, Medric, Annie, and Gosh are, um, you do see the symbols lining up on the walls. Uh, these are no longer the words, but you see those sort of closed blocks. Um, where Silas is, uh, no, you've read all those words before, so you see familiar words. Um, you see the floating stones. Um, basically, they are alternating. Um, I didn't have a chance to really describe it before, but there are stones every 10, 10 feet, so each level down, um, and then the actual... Um, switch itself is upper uh, up in the air. It is possible to walk around the room on the ledge, but it is very, very tricky, especially towards the middle part, where you're essentially having to climb over the uh, displays that are there. So, what is everybody going to do now? I'm just going to hunker down in the earth room until everybody like figures everything out. <laughs> I'm going to lie down on the floor and yeah, same. Hope that people find their way back. Okay. Silas is going to eat a floating candy and then push off from the wall to head to the other side. There you go. Nice. I knew those were going to come in handy. All right, so now you're kind of moved over. Ah, I did it again. Eh. <laughs> the universe collapses. There we go. Uh, kind of floating over to the edge over there. Okay. And triggering the switch? Yep. All right. Fifteenth time's a charm. This time, only Dudek <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, Silas have to do it. Um, um, also, Silas is going to, uh, with the candy, he's going to go to whichever of the two levels is the one that's rotating clockwise, because then it will smack him into the next room. Okay. The upper one is moving clockwise. Okay. All right. Then he will be at the upper level and then just prepare to get smacked from behind. Okay. Um, go ahead and make your acrobatics or athletics with advantage. Um, as you see, um, when the walls move once more, um, hey, Dudek not die. has managed to, to flip in. And floating up with the upper level uh, is... Um, Silas. Okay. Uh, and now you find yourselves once more in the initial space you had started in. All things seem to be stopped to stop moving. I'm not hitting any switches for a bit. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Well, that was. Really cool the candies were off. Yeah, I, I think it lasts a minute. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dudek kind of takes a moment. Maybe we should rest a bit before we move any further. That and is then, an excellent and idea. And roll a d20 for me, that. please, someone. Um, d20. And actually, Silas can also roll me a Four. d20. Oh, okay. or did 
Murray already rolled uh, one. Murray already rolled one. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'll need one from, from Silas as well. A D20? Yep. Okie dokie. 16. Okay. You didn't spend much time in that room, but you could kind of tell that from below there were some things emerging. You could hear them kind of um, whooshing back and forth, but you were definitely not in that room for very long. Um, in that room... Uh, oh, the void room. Yes, in this one... All right, so the longer we stay in, the more bad things happen. Um... I think if the portal's open, basically we're finding out what comes through each time we go into the room. Um, this room doesn't have an open portal. Oh, never mind. Neither one of those would have done anything, so you're good. <laughs> so, what would you like to do? Uh, Take a break. <laughs> yeah. Do that gives kind of suggesting that. For a bit. <laughs> that. Dudek is kind of suggesting that as well, and you can see that he's kind of beaten up um, between all these different yep. things happening. Um, Him and, and Gosh are currently quite uh, quite beaten up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's, a, there's a, a, a you know, still scratching on the floor where Gosh was caught by the lower one and kind of dragged for a while until he managed to squeeze himself underneath it. Because um, he didn't yeah, know it was coming. <laughs> Alright, so you're going to take a bit of a break? I'll be right back. After these messages. Yeah, uh, Silas is gonna waste some hit dice. <laughs> it's not a waste if it keeps you alive. He's only got two of them left. He got eight hit points out of it. Well, it's eight more than you had before. Mm. Uh, let's see. More importantly, he gets his two spell slots back. Indeed. All right. Damn, I'm rolling nicely. Uh, Dudek kind of sits down, and you see him, him kind of... Um, sit down in kind of a, a almost a lotus position and then wave his hand uh, kind of pulling from one hand to the other and a book appears and he starts taking notes I'm back. curious uh, let's see um, one moment I want to do the hit dice there uh, so we are taking a break Yes. It yes. seems that way, yeah. Perfect. Oops. Yeah, All actually, right. um, Silas will open the Argenti Sagax tome and see it, just flip through it, see if there's anything that applies here. Um, yeah. Um, when you open the tome, as you had before with the, with the, uh, the ring in hand, the tome, um, sprouts a pillar of white radiant light that it sits on, uh, its own pillar, and it glows in the room, in fact, practically lighting up the entire room. Semi-translucent pages are there, and you start to flip through them. Um, go ahead and make a, um, it's called an investigation roll to kind of read through. Okay. 18. Um, as you're looking through, and actually Dudek, uh, after taking a few notes, sees what you're doing and kind of comes to look over your shoulder. Well, not really look over your shoulder because he's a dwarf, but uh, look beneath your elbow, perhaps. Um, Backseat kind of... reader. What's that? Backseat reader. Backseat reader, exactly. He climbs uh, up on my shoulder. Uh, well, he wouldn't uh, presume. <laughs> um, but as, as you're kind of both looking through the book, um, there are a number of symbols that start to to, uh, to 
become more apparent. Some of them are representative of the symbols that are in the center part. Uh, the ones that particularly Annie had been paying attention to, but um, you kind of would have glanced over and seen a couple of them. And as you do, you kind of see these representations. Um, they're representations of these different um, these different fundamental planes of existence. Um, but you notice a couple of things. One, um, the sequence of, of four, um, the same number or same uh, sequence in terms of the, the color and uh, square uh, representation that you saw back on the uh, the armor of the Agenti Sagex long ago, you'd notice that his breastplate had a sequence of colors on it, uh, brown, blue, red, and black. Uh, and you start to put that together along with the the um, the different things you've seen here. Um, but in the book, the four fundamental planes are earth, water, fire, air. And it has a white block in the book, which is different from what you've seen on the armor and different from what you've seen in here, where the last block is not exactly white, it's actually a dark, it's consuming light. It's the opposite of white. Um, and that stands out to you. The other thing you, you notice is that, um, depending on how you hold the pages of the book, um, there are marginalia, which are written. Um, they don't really show up until you kind of close the book and look at the edge, and you can see um, what are now familiar runes, um, but you did not recognize them and you cannot read them, um, but you recognize uh, the passage um, in acknowledging fear, the doorway is open. From the universe, the knowledge blooms. On the edges of that, you see that they correspond to the door to the walls you've seen before, and were translated by uh, by Gosh. Yeah. Hmm. Well, the Agenti Segax like these particular phrases, anyways. Um, it has the feeling more of a mantra. I wish more of their books actually survived, and the ones like yours weren't damaged. Well, the only thing I can think of for continuing on from here is moving that last stone until we find a good spot for it. Basically. I, I'm not sure what to do after that. I mean, maybe that'll be enough. I don't know. So tell me again what happened when you placed the stones in the other rooms. Uh, well, for the fire one, if we moved the fire stone to the wrong spot, the fire pillar became less. It was only strong if we put it in one spot. Um, I think the water room, the water only comes in when we have it in the right spot. That's why I'm thinking that those are opening portals to the elemental planes. Uh, the void one, I don't remember what it did. Um, just as a reminder, like the, flame the, pillar could be blocked too, possibly. The, the void stone is in this room. You left it here. I thought we left... Oh. You left the earth stone... Oh in the void room. Uh, is that... Yeah, I did remember something about that. Da, da, da. Yeah, that was it. We've got the, yeah, we have, uh, yeah, the other, the void room had the brown stone in it. We need to switch those two stones. Okay. That was it. So how about this? I'll go to the void room with this stone and swap them out. Or no, I can't because we need a mage hand for that one. Yeah. Um. I 
I mean, I, I still have a couple of those float candies left. I could go to that one and then bring it. Well, bring this one to there and then bring that one back to here. Just be careful and make sure you're well rested. Yeah, I'm a, I'm re I'm as rested as I'm going to be get to get, but um I mean I could take one of the candies and float up so that we don't need Mage Ham. Well I, yeah, well, I... The, the the candy just floats, it doesn't fly. Oh. Uh so it would just keep one of us from falling down below, but it wouldn't actually let us fly over to something. Well, that's that's how I made it through that space. I don't have any candies. I'm not sure what you mean by that, but I do have some spells available. I know one called Levitate, for example, which is what I use to float across the room. Mm, and um, that's what the float candies do. Yeah, the magic um, hands as well. I I know how to do that. It's been a long time since I've done much for Majory in this particular case, but I I do remember a few tricks. Uh, but yeah, we, do, we don't need to all go into the other room to swap no, I, it. No, I think one person is all we should have. Otherwise, the more, the more people who go over, the more people might get battered around and knocked unconscious. Or split up again. Yeah. Yep. Um... <laughs> To yeah, you, Cure. It, th this shouldn't be anything difficult other than the actual room transitions, so. Well, I will lie on the floor. I will hopefully be right back. You got I'll this. Give, I'll give, uh, I'll, I'll provide guidance to Silas. Do okay. not get smashed um, by the door, or by the wall. Yeah, I can. When I have one of these candies, I can control how far up and down I go. Uh, I believe so. It's been a long time since okay. I've looked that on it, but essentially, why? Well, yeah, I think it basically just gives you the levitation spell. Yeah, levitate normally but, uh, doesn't give the the target the ability to do that, but uh, in this case, you mm -hmm. do. Um, yeah, it doesn't give you any vertical movement. That's where you have to crawl along or or pull a rope or something to move yourself around. No, you mean horizontal movement. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm not sure what yeah. I said, but that's what I meant. Yep. Uh, yeah, so he'll just... Uh, what is it? The bottom one was counterclockwise, so he'll, he'll, he'll eat one of the candies and then flip the switch while he's on the bottom level so that it's going to knock him into the next room. Okay. Um, it's easy enough now that you know that these can be avoided, especially in this room where you're not in a threat in the middle of the room. Um, and you know when it's going to happen. Yeah. Part of the problem for Gosh is he didn't know it was happening and so got caught unawares. Yep. All right. Uh, let's uh, see. So you activate it. Yep. Or take the candy, activate it. Um, uh, and... Put the eye in the middle. Now, uh, please make an acrobatics or athletics roll to try to end up where you want to be, not just shoved through to the other room. I get shoved. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll say you're still in that room, but uh, please roll me a d10 and a d4. Uh, D10, D4, a one and a two. Okay, so you end up in that spot right there, hovering above the floor. Hot dog. That's right <laughs> where I wanted to be. Okay, there's nothing within grasping range of you? Yep. Oh, sorry, and I was bringing the void stone with me. Okay. That was uh, part of the, yeah. the reason we were doing this in the first place. <laughs> right, the voice sound uh, is in there. He's going to uh, grab. Uh, he's going to mage hand the brown stone out of there. Okay, and okay. over to him. You now have it. And then, and then he'll mage stone, mage hand the void stone uh, over 
let's say the top one, the one that the brownstone was in. Okay. Uh, it lands there solidly. No change in the room, no change in anything that you can see. Okay, he'll wait again about 30 seconds and then move it down one and then he'll just keep doing that till okay. something happens or he hits the bottom. When it lands in the very bottom one, um, it, there is a, a small sound of, of kind of, almost a, it's almost a ping in the air. It's not quite as high pitched as that. It's almost though as, as though something resonates. Uh, yeah. And um, you feel sort of a breeze. Please roll me a d20, please. Uh -oh. Yeah, he's going to get out of here as fast as he friggin' can. GTFO. 16. Uh, 16. Okay. Oops. I went, scrolled down too far. Uh, and can I have a d4? Three. Okay. Um, don't think they are silent. Um, okay. Even if they are silent, it's not changing what he's doing. <laughs> Um, you sense the shifting breeze uh, and hear a sound kind of like if you took the sound of leaves rustling and reversed it uh, and you kind of get that weird inverted sound. Um, three times you hear that kind of pop into existence uh, and from where you are yeah, you can see that down about about 60 feet away from where you are, so pretty much right on the edge of your vision, you start to see movement um, from, oops, um, down about that area, as you see three, three um, long slender uh, um, shapes start to move, almost moving like one, like one whirlwind, but you start to realize that they are three separate snake-like flying... Um, they look like the worms. Uh, no, they're not purple. They're very small. They're closer to, okay. to, to view of like an eel, but instead of a shiny surface, um, they seem to have, uh, um, much like the stone itself, they seem to absorb light rather than reflect light. And they seem to be kind of swirling around and kind of moving upward quickly. Um, uh, I have to change one thing slightly. It, w it wasn't 30 seconds. It was only a count of 10 because the candies only last a minute. Okay. Uh, so he wouldn't have been able to. Uh, so, yeah, as, as soon as that's happening, he's making sure that the brown stone is secure okay. and won't fall out. And then he's going to flick the switch. Uh, well, rise up a little and then flick the switch to get knocked back into the earth room okay um that will be uh an uh an athletics or acrobatics you will make it in as where you end up in the room no, um, 14 14 you'll end up where you want to be in the other room essentially uh, as yeah. the rooms once more that, that spot's fine um once more rotate uh in the meantime those who are in the other room would have noticed the um the block-like shapes appearing. Uh, and then our, whoops, oh, I did it again. Don't want to grab that one. There. Uh, now, curious question, how well do they do? Okay. Uh, they did not want to leave and yet get wrapped up. And you can kind of see pouring out and around the 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 uh, walls that move just behind uh, Silas, uh, pouring as three separate beings that kind of float and flow back together almost as one. Um, these flying uh, eel-like creatures, very very dark and black to the to the uh, uh, to the uh, to the eye, um, but kind of treated treated as one as they fly in and around and make it into the room you're in. That's what the three is representing there. Uh, if they're coming there, then I want to be over here. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, Silas, you've got company. 
and they seem to, to oh. move and fly and hover. Um, again, they are three distinct bodies, but they seem to, to move in a constant uh, fluctuating motion. Uh, can everyone please make an intelligence saving throw? Shit. <laughs> three. Twenty-two. <laughs> Um, get one for Dudek. Um, that's not, that's not the right one anyway. Uh, do we have one from, uh, from Annie? Do we have Annie? <laughs> it might be AFK. Yep. Oh, oh, there we go. There you go. No, uh, nope. my brain just... Sorry, sorry, uh, it's an intelligence saving throw. D intelligence. No, not okay. dexterity, Oops. so. No worries. I read dexterity as the last one that had gone through. Well, anyway. oh, that was my mistake. Those were. Okay. Oh, oh okay. So, 10. All right. Uh, so, that'll be Annie and. Uh, Medric got a three. Medric. So. <laughs> uh, are both affected by this. As the spinning and swirling increases, it catches your eye and starts to twist your brain. Those who are uh, noticing the effect will blink away and don't take um, the effect of mind twisting. Um, for those who did not look away, it is for psychic damage. Uh, what about Gosh? Oh, I knew I forgot to roll somebody. Where is Gosh here? Gosh, uh, Gosh got a fourteen, so he's okay. Um, actually, I will roll it with his advantage because he's extraordinarily curious about everything. Uh, but a twelve is still enough. Oh, sorry, no, a twelve is not enough. Oh. Uh, as he stares at the thing, trying to make sense of it. And doesn't realize he's losing his mind as he does so. So is uh, it only psychic damage, or is there, is there some other effect? It's just psychic damage. I'll just grab my head, and it's like, oh, what the fuck is that? I would suggest you look away. I don't know what that is, but it's concerning. Kill it. It looks like leeches. Um, my mind hurts. It hurts my brain. Uh, immediately... Well, I know what spell not to use against them. Uh, Crispy flies over. And you see a little bit of the intertwining of the whirlwind of fire and these chaos snakes. And this should be interesting. Uh, that's not the one. Go, Crispy. You know what to do. Uh, oh, yeah. It's one of mine. Uh, what does that one look like? As the Elder Spark takes on the Chaos Snakes. <laughs> how bad can that be? I want to see how dangerous they are. Because neither one is really all that particularly dangerous. These are very small things, but... Uh, okay. Uh, eh, it could be dangerous. Okay. I don't have automated rules, so I have to do all these manually. But. Yeah. There's an intertwining of, of both kinds of creature. Neither one seeming to affect the other all that much. Uh, it looks intriguing and unfortunately keeps dragging people's eyes, but those who've already saved uh, are know enough not to look for very long. Uh, and those who basically they're both having a slap fight kind mm -hmm. of yeah um, two semi ethereal beings are trying to hit each other and neither one is actually able to hit each other because they're semi ethereal beings um, but one is really hot that's, that's true in a certain sense um, you do have the earth stone with you as well um, what would sounds you like to do Um, are we fighting? 
They seem to be engaged for the moment. Both um, of them seem distracted with each other. Yeah. So as long as you don't look in their direction. Well, uh, I'll, uh, I guess I'll, I'll, I mean, if, if it's not attacking us, uh, oh, something good at 21. Yeah. So both of them kind of stirring around each other for a moment and then it starts to get more dangerous. Um, that one is able oh, to look. do that. They're hugging. <laughs> um, the other one could we help it yeah we should help Chris or is this anything. a first date <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know how elementals operate that one like how is... can I hit one without hitting the other is what I'm wondering they're essentially occupying the same space this is this is two swarms that are fighting essentially, um, and they're starting to do damage to each other. You can see that there's there's singeing going on, but also the the whirlwind is starting to to lose some of its some of its turns. Um, you're not sure how much time this is going to go on or who's going to win. But so, um, I'm assuming Crispy is immune to fire, right? Um, reasonable assumption. Okay, fire so I will... is not going to be hurt by more fire. Exactly. Okay, so. But we never it, know in the magical world. It, in, in it was kind world. of living in the column of fire. <laughs> okay. So I will cast Sacred Flame on the pile, and it should affect the Chaos Snakes, but not Crispy. Um, uh, sacred fire, Flame's not actually fire, though. It's radiant. It's radiant. Yeah. Um, it's a light blast. Then yeah, I'll cast fireball. Produce Flame under it. That'll work. Uh, yep, you can Produce Flame. You can throw it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's yeah. a ranged attack at that point. All right. I'm not sure how much damage it does. It's negligible, but any little bit helps. I think for well, it'd be two dice. It's either two d six or two d four. Um. Uh, let me see. Produce flame. Uh, what flame what, what level are you now? You. You're. I'm level ten. Level 10 is 2d8. Okay, so oh, yeah, d8s. Eight. Wow, nice. Hell yeah. yeah. It doesn't grow quite as fast, but it is Oops. pretty high to begin with. Uh, but you do have I to hit. The window. Yep. Uh, and so the void snakes, so or chaos snakes. Wind up with my ball of fire in my hand. Okay. 26 to hit. <sighs> yeah, oh yeah, that definitely hits. Nice. Um, do I add my ball of fire to this? I forget. No. To your damage? No. No, it's just the 2d8. It takes 9 damage. Okay. And then it had that before. Um, yeah, it seems quite diminished. Only one of the three um, Chaos Snakes seems to be still active, even though, uh, and I will have you make an intelligent saving throw, even though uh, um, there is only one of them. It still seems to be represented in all three positions. It's just sort of spreading itself out. Um, 11 for my end saving throw. Okay. Um, you take two points of psychic damage as you had to look at it to target it. Um, so it is much oh. diminished. And now let's see if the fire can finish it off. Um, Oh, that's in that 20. Yeah, easily. Um, so you see the fire eventually just sort of consume, uh, and then the the writhing of the Void Snake, or Chaos Snake, I use the names interchangeably, uh, it is writhing within the the whirlwind of flame, and you can kind of see that it's face, it fire, uh, firing out or pushing out in all directions, and you see the flames distort and shift, and then suddenly the flames become smooth once more. Spur swirling and spinning. And only one Yay. remains. Great job, Crispy. Um, yeah. So it's 5.30. Do we want to oh, just try and see where that rock, brown rock goes? And then uh, we can break for the night. Seems reasonable. Works for me. Okay. Silas will levitate it over to position number... Here. So there? And 
position here. <laughs> um, yep. And as you move through them, it does not seem to react until it gets to the first position. And again, there's sort of a, this time a low rumble that you can almost feel through the floor. And then you realize you are feeling it through the floor. As the room starts to shake and twist, rocks fall from the ceiling. Other rocks are thrust up from the floor. Uh, can I have everybody make a dexterity saving throw, first of all? Uh-oh. As you feel like the entire space One. is now activated. 18. I land on my ass. I accidentally dog. rolled it with advantage. Rolled oh. double ones. Oh. Wow. Oh, actually, you, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's terrible. Uh, right. Sorry. And I also got um, one. Uh, as the floor and the ceiling both seem to erupt in uh, uh, an earthquake, um, you take seven points of bludgeoning damage. Those who failed, and a failure is uh, um, fifteen or less. Uh, let me just check on Dudek here quickly. Seven points. Uh, seven. Yep. Dudek is Dudek fails. Um, we all fell on our ass. And except for the floating guy. Actually, ironically, yes, everybody except for the floating guy, because uh, uh, Dudek failed, as did uh, Gosh. Um. Uh, as it seems like there is an active earthquake in this place, uh, someone please roll me a d20. 13. 13. Everybody, oh, jeez. <laughs> that is... This is getting disturbing. He was first. All right. Hmm? Okay. Um, oh, we rolled an 18 first? Okay. Yep. I didn't uh, And a D4, please. We all kind of happened at the same time. A three. Um, Honestly, it was weird because Nax is... I think me and Nax pressed it the exact same second, and it took a second for it to figure out who went first. <laughs> because I saw Nax's first, and then mine showed up. Okay, so I'm not Tracy. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's, yeah, the irony. Um, as the, the room continues to shake and rumble around, um, I don't have an icon for them, but um, you notice two, or sorry, three boulders um, kind of pop up out of the, the uh, floor itself into one large shape. Uh, and then each of the three seems to shift a little bit. And then tiny little legs lift the whole rock up as it starts to move. Um, in your head, Silas, you hear the whispery, confused voice of Gosh. Power spread out, not the door. Power each place, not the exit. Uh, as we will, in the next session, mm -hmm. begin with however this goes. <laughs> with the, uh, 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 let me see, what disposition do they have? Well, okay, might not be too bad. Um, as these creatures seem to uh, be half boulder and then half tiny little creature underneath. They are very small. They're about the size of gnomes, these, these boulders that are there. And they're large boulders on the back with feet underneath. Um, and uh, you've now figured out a few things. Maybe figured you got a few more things to figure out. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, you have progressed further in this strange space. Um, we will once more meet up again next uh, in two weeks on the 21st of may thank you for watching if you're watching live uh if you're watching this on youtube thank you for watching there as well on youtube it's youtube.com slash encaf1 and caf1 look for the legends of the drowned isles or the camping to the great confusion playlists if you're looking for us on twitch you can check it out at twitch.tv slash encaf1 we stream on sundays every other sunday starting at around three o'clock roughly if, if all the technical stuff goes well and unlike today uh that's three o'clock Atlantic time. So uh, you can also find Watchers of the Drowned Isles, the Facebook group. That's where uh, Pat has been very diligent about writing uh, summaries of past episodes. If you're curious about what's led up to this point, by all means, please read those as well. And uh, you can also comment and join us there. 
We'd love to hear from you. Thanks to my players for joining me again on this warming Sunday. We're starting to see the, trend, the, uh, the temperature change, so it won't be too long before I need to put an air conditioner in this room. Uh, we'll see how that works out. Uh, but uh, thank you once again for joining me, guys. Thanks for running. Have a good night. And the end credits come now. Now? <laughs>